Hey guys, Super Anime Store here. We just want to make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell and share this video with everyone you know. Enjoy the video. Hey, what's up guys? Um, after all the vlogging content, uh, halfway through the video, we start the uh, interview with uh, Sharon Lee. so make sure you guys stay all the way to the end and uh, can't wait for you guys to enjoy it. See you next time. Peace. It's Carlo. What's up? <laughs> Are you gonna trip today? No, I'm not. <laughs> it happened one time and one time only. Bro, this man fell, and he was like, "We have it." And the that was the last. That was the last one I ever did. <laughs> it was bad. Think about it. I was emotionally drained that day. He knows that. He saw me. It was hot. That was the day after. It's on. It's on the vlog. If you haven't go seen it, go see it. This shouldn't be new news. Check it out. You. YouTube slash Super Anime Store. Oh, Check it out. Well, they're they're on it right now. Well, you know what I mean. They're on it right now. <laughs> All right, that's Carlos. He's not. He's not doing so well today. Um, hopefully, you guys like the beanie. I wore it in live. Someone said it was fire. Um, we took most of the stuff that Shami voice actress and put it in the studio where she's at right now. Um, so, uh, by the looks of the time, we can walk back over there and check up to see how it's doing. Boom. What's up guys? We're here in the VIP section in the studio. Um, this is taking, taking place between 12 and 1, which is pretty sick. Um, so we're just gonna... We're gonna show you, show you guys what's going on right now. I don't want to be too loud and interrupt the fun, but here you go. What are you guys doing? Oh, you guys doing? Thank you for rocking the beef right here. Yay! I'm so glad. Oh, from Fairy Tale. Yes. And then you were playing Persona, and you're like, this Makoto. Actually, no. The second voice I knew was Kamara. Actually. Oh, very. Yeah, Makoto's a little bit closer to Kamara. Yeah, because like they're more familiar. Yeah. Actually. Like, I started knowing more because I was like, adding more stuff. Very cool. I love how you did A2 because Thank it was like so you. Yeah, right. A2 to how you did Lucy. A2 is very different from Lucy. Because you usually do like the cheerful character. Yeah. A2 is like more menacing. She is, yeah. I remember when I auditioned for it, the producer and the casting director were like, are you sure you want to read for this character? I was like, I do want to read for that character. So and they're well. like, we didn't know you could do that. Right. I didn't even know you And did now Rhea they either. let me do, that was the same studio. They cast me as Rhea and then, uh, after that, I started doing a lot of characters with deeper yeah. voices. Everyone's like, oh, we didn't know she could do that. Great. Do this yeah. all the time. Your, your V. <laughs> oh, v. yeah. Amazing. V and Cyberpunk is so v, much yes. fun. Well, actually, I did get the yeah, so that was the first one. one, and that yeah. was thanks yeah. to Colleen Klingenberg. Yeah. She was like, I think you can do a character with a deep voice. And I was like, I don't think you're right. But I, you always trust Colleen Klingenberg. Yeah. She knows what she's talking about. That sounds good. So you were saying, you what, what did you do for your first... Um, I've, uh, I'm writing a story, and it contains, and it's inspired by a song by Elton John called Benny and the Jets. Oh my gosh, one of our faves. And, yes, and I've created an original character. <gasps> you always have specific, such great specific, art. Yeah, specifically for you to oh my be gosh. the voice of. I'm so I'd excited. I'd like you to meet Amarina Henderson. Oh, oh. she's so cool! That's oh, really that's good. That's amazing. Yes, it was my friend who did the drawing, but I was the one who conceived the idea Very after cool. doing the original ones that I showed you in Okada. Absolutely. And uh, the original artist loved it so much that he just went ahead and just like spammed it on social media. Oh and my I gosh, said, how cool! Yeah, and I said, well, he was she was supposed to be an original character for my story, so I went ahead and I paid my friend to redesign the character, and this was the result. I have Whoa. more photos. I love that! That's and so cool! Thank you. And also, also, um, I believe the last time we went to Ocala, the last time I saw you in Ocala, yeah. you always wanted to be a host for Saturday Night Live. I, that would be very cool. Well, I made your dream. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it would be too. Absolutely. I know. You, you, you know how you're always watching the pro, the Saturday Night Live, always. all the promo and they all images. Do the goofy images. I know. I, went, so I found the cool. most cutest photo I can find. <laughs> That was, and I that was from our uh, from the the promos for A Box. Oh yeah. Yeah. When we first started filming this, which was so fun, they just came in and had a huge setup and said, "Guys, be goofy." Boom! What's up, everybody? It's been a while since I vlogged. Grabbed the camera, picked it up. You know, doing the podcast, doing the live, hanging out with you guys. 
unboxing, filling up the store, um, which you guys see on the live. We preview a bunch of new figures and stuff. But what you guys just saw on the video was the VIP session here Saturday at the Lauder Hill store, which is pretty sick. It's pretty intimate, as you can see, super worth it. Um, so if you feel like you missed out and you feel like you can spend those VIP tickets, it's really, really worth it. Um, we really wish we had it with Bryce, um, to have those intimate, intimate moments with Bryce, which would have been really, really awesome. But as you can see, it's really, really worth it. You get to hang out, you get to talk. Um, it's really cool, man. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and we'll keep you updated throughout the day. Peace. Problem. There's a problem. What do you mean? No, it's on. It's on. It's um, recording right now. Look, see? Alright, so we just messed up. We just ordered Planet Go Cheese from Boward Mall. Um, they're gonna be here soon. Um, what'd you get? I got like the deluxe club sandwich. I got the uh, chicken hot chicken melt sandwich. Oh, is it have the mac and cheese on it? I think no, I think it has the uh, Parmesan. Oh he got the mac and cheese on the side, I got the fries. Uh, I got the blueberry frosted lemonade, basically an icy. And he's got the... Strawberry banana lemon uh, smoothie. Ooh, so we're waiting for that. Uh, let's go check on everyone in the line. The VIP session's over, so let's go see how they're doing. Yeah. Boom! Peace. Peace. Sign here. Yeah. Here, bring it close. Bring it to the camera. So I brought my oh, clean paw that I'm getting signed, and I bought this beautiful poster of Queen. Oh yeah. And I'm so excited to meet Jeremy. It's uh, I don't even know what I'm gonna say to her. <laughs> we'll look at it on really camera. <laughs> Where did you get that shirt? Supercon actually. Supercon. I was gonna because I have a couple of Madonna shirts. But Sandra is gonna want that shirt so bad. I know. I'm thinking she's it's gonna want so that shirt. cute. I've never seen that one. Yes. Yes. Would you yes. like your name on this one? Yes, that'd be great. Perfect. Spell your name for me so I don't mess it up. No, that's no problem. It's Kara. C A R A. C A R A. I love it. And yeah, so like a specific quote or any quote charge I, well, Johanna, actually, don't it's it's I'm gonna ask. I don't remember if you say anything in the game when you're kind of soft in the group with the book upside down. But that scene was so funny. Oh my gosh, do I? I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> oh my gosh, but I can write in an asterisk stalking you. Yes, yeah, yeah, please. Oh my God. Down. <laughs> I, I feel like if she did say something, it was just like a casual, like, hi guys. Like, yeah. Something super subtle exactly. like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Is there a specific color or colors that you would like for this one, and a specific quote that you would like? Um. Can we do blue and purple? Blue and purple. You got it. Colors. Light blue or dark blue? Uh, light blue. Please. You got it. Light blue and purple. And then um. Yeah, you can put a charge on. Do you want your name on this one? Um, or just I think that was just Poda signature. Yeah, 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 I got to see, what was it, Robbie, Max, and Erica at 
super con. Yay! They are just such amazing. They are such amazing people. That's what's so great about this cast is they all love each other. We all get along very, very well. You guys are just so talented. And we don't get to hang out as much as we would like. Are you guys all based in LA? Or? We are all based in LA. Actually. We should hang out more often. But usually, uh, when one of us has a day off, it's because the other one is working. Oh. And so, like, it's like, oh, since we're working on a lot of the same projects. And it's incredible because, like, I didn't realize you were near. Oh, yeah. Too. I was like, wait a second. I realized Absolutely. that. I was like, no way. They were going to do a near automata event. And we were all going to be in the same place at the same time. And then I had to ruin it because I had a different event the same oh, weekend. No. So they were like, oh my gosh, we're all going to be in the same place. It's going to be like almost all the cast. And then it was my fault that ruined it. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Oh my god. Just that was so incredible. I'm like speechless. I'm never prepared to like meet like voice actors and whatnot. But she signed my um, Makoto Pop and I she put my favorite colors and it's really beautiful. Oh, that Those is are great sick. shades of blue and purple. And then she also put. We have a, a, we have a lot of glare. Yeah. Oh. She put a beautiful quote wow. on my poster. And actually, I asked her to put a very specific scene from the game. And it was where she's stalking the whole group with the upside down book. <laughs> and she just put it in asterisk just to play out the scene. <laughs> and oh my goodness. What a treat. Oh my goodness. I can't thank you guys enough, really. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm sorry about the glare. No, if you see this later on in the that's video. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want you to leave that. Hello, how can I help you? And uh, I played uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses too. All right, so a um, little behind the scenes here. Um, what we just walked into was our studio where we're um, doing all the signing and stuff like that. I love the lighting in here. Um, after we fix it. Um, so I'm just chilling back here. It's Jeremy, Jeremy Lee is right there. And she's doing all the cool signing and stuff. Um, and so we just wanted to show you like how close we are to the action back here when you watch our podcast. Everything happens on the other side of that. We usually have our setup, all of our equipment machines, but um, let's go see what everyone else is doing. Just want to let you guys know that this is the part coming up. We've got Jeremy Lee! Mini interview, mini podcast, so sit and enjoy. It's about 22 minutes long. Um, and uh, peace out. And what's up guys, Super Anime Store here with Super Chat Podcast, a short one today. We have uh, Sherry Lee here and Hello. I'm your host Justin and your host Carlos. How are you guys doing today? Hope you guys have a wonderful day. <laughs> or night. Yeah, it's another, it's another late one that we're doing. Yeah. We usually do these during the day. Like, yeah. how's, how's it been so far here It's in been Florida? great. So much fun. And everybody said, you gotta watch out, it's gonna be really hot and really humid. It's been delightful. So yeah, you're lucky. I <laughs> so appreciate that everybody in Florida gave such great weather while I'm here. It's been light. It's been lovely. It's all the energy. Florida's, yeah. We usually say Florida's weather is bipolar. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it, it, all, it all depends on literally the mood of Hopefully the Hopefully I didn't jinx week. it yeah. for tomorrow. We still got one more day. You'll be fine. Okay, You'll be okay, fine. good. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> if, any, if anything, they'll just bring you a bunch of umbrellas. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um... I know, real quick, what got you into voice acting? So I got into acting because uh, as a child, I wanted to be on Barney. I was, uh, as a very, very small child, like a two, three-year-old child, I would be doing commercials in the bathtub, like Tide commercials. And uh, I, my parents were like, oh no, she's not gonna do this acting thing. Because my mom did it as a child and she said, it's a really harsh business, it's really terrible, it's terrible for your self-esteem, mm. and uh, it's not great for kids. And so she tried to discourage me, she put me in classes for kids way older than me, she took me to open calls where she thought she's gonna be there all day, she's gonna get exhausted, she's gonna get tired of it, she's gonna hate it. And each challenge that she gave me made me want to do it even more. So it totally backfired on her. So then she had a, 
a student who uh, was on Barney, was one of the cast members of Barney, and I was like, oh, that's attainable. My mom teaches, teaches her, so I could be on that show too. So we met with an agent, and the agent was like, I'm not looking to sign anybody, and my mom said, great, please shut this dream down. And I met with the agent, and the agent signed me, and I started doing commercials, and then I started doing voiceover commercials and radio commercials, and then I worked for Radio Disney. And so I'd been working for 12 or 13 years doing TV shows, movies, uh, voiceover commercials. What's Radio Disney? Radio Disney was a radio station um, that was on a couple of FM uh, dials and a lot of AM dials. And we played Disney Channel music. We played, uh, we played, of course, Disney movie music. And then we played also a lot of popular songs that artists would come in and do Radio Disney specific edits Mm. so that it was clean for people to listen to. But it wasn't a kid's bop version. It was the artist coming in because Disney reached out to them. They're like, yeah, we'll do a clean edit for you. Um, So that was very cool. And I worked with, started working with them when I was eight and I did all the commercials for them and all the imaging. So you would listen to Radio Disney AM 620. And that was me. And I did that for over, I worked for the company for over 25 years. I got to be uh, a radio DJ and I had my own show, 8 to Midnight on the Air, uh, nationally broadcast. What age did you start at? at uh, on the air? Yeah. I started doing the show at 19 and I did that for a couple of years and then went back to doing just imaging, all the commercials and the, the tags for all the different shows. And then I started writing for them as well. And I was the oh, writer wow. for Radio Disney, Radio Disney Junior, which was uh, the baby baby kids station and then uh, I also did uh, they launched Radio Disney Country and I started doing that as well so I wrote for three stations while I was voice acting while I was acting on camera and uh, that was really fun so I had been doing that for a while and then when I was 18 uh, so I guess around the time I started working as a DJ at Radio Disney I auditioned at Funimation Uh, for a show called Peach Girl, and I got cast as Psy and Peach Girl, and that was my first anime. Why does it sound familiar? It's Peach Girl? uh, Peach Girl is a very high school drama. I was the meanest of mean girls who made Momo's life miserable, and I had been bullied in school, so I thought, like, oh, this is going to be terrible. I just got out of high school, and now i got to be the mean girl. I was attacked by mean girls the whole time, and uh, it was actually very cathartic because being the mean girl... (laughs) you realize, wow, she's really hurting a lot. She's dealing with a lot of stuff. (laughs) And it (laughs) got me a lot of compassion for the girls Mm -hmm. that were mean to me. I was like, man, what were they dealing with? Because they were really mean to me, and I know what this girl is dealing with, so they must have been dealing with their own stuff. So uh, I guess that started my journey of playing in my characters that have helped me get through different challenges in my life and helped me heal a lot of things. And it all started with the meanest of mean girls' side. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I remember we... We asked Bryce, like, how he dealt with Aaron. Oh, sure. Yeah. Have you ever um, dealt with a character that was that heavy, that it affected you? A lot of of screaming. Oh, always. There's been uh, been a couple, I would say probably for most of the characters that I've played, uh, certainly if I've gotten to voice them for more than a season, there's always a moment that is very impactful when the character's going through something, a very emotional challenge or a very uh, difficult time. Uh, We have to feel like what they're feeling. If they're crying or if they're dealing with a loss Mm -hmm. or they're dealing with grief, we've got to convincingly be able to portray that. So sometimes at the end of the day when we've done this take five, six, seven times to get the timing exactly right, to get the reads exactly right, we are so exhausted. But then there's other times like uh, V, female V and cyberpunk, there's so many moments in that game um, that just stay with you. And I would be working on that almost every day uh, for like 10, 12 months. Um, but there's there's some side quests in there that are so heavy and so intense and give you so much to think about uh, of what the character's dealing with, about other characters in the game that you interact with, that I would be driving home from the studio and just go, man, that's heavy. And we're like... <laughs> We're halfway through the quest, and yeah. I mean, what a gift to be able to have content like that that makes you um, kind of sit back and and be grateful about your life, or if there's something that you're like, man, I hate that my character did that. Why did I do that so well? That must be something I need to work on that I don't like about myself. Uh, so there's always opportunities to be able to connect with them and to learn from them, to learn more about myself. Mm. But yeah, it, it happens regularly that I'll come home and just be like, 
why do I feel like I need to sleep for eight years and go, oh, I've played a character that just killed 500 people today. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot of guilt. I should probably do that. <laughs> yeah. So I got a journal um, in during COVID and uh, I start writing down like any line that came up that was very profound during a recording session or a scene that was really hard for me, just to try to journal and get it out and kind of take ownership and see whatever that brings up for me. And I'll go, sometimes I'll go, oh, and that reminded me of when I was 10 and somebody said mm. such and such. And so it's been super, super helpful, but it allows me to take ownership of my emotions and also to process them in what feels like a healthier way for me so I'm not bogged down by it. I'm certainly not perfect, so sometimes I will get frustrated during road rage or I'll need to cry and sing a super emotional song or watch an, uh, a super emotional movie and just cry it out. But it kind of helps me heal and process those emotions. Yeah, I go on yeah. our Reddit. Which is helpful. Um, I bleach and watch all the cute animals. Of course. Yeah, yeah, cute, yeah, cute, yeah, adorable yeah, animals. Yeah. Emmanuel the emu, always funny. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, so with being, um, has, has there anything like, and the world of politics or mm -hmm. economics and like just real world current event stuff yeah, totally. ever affect your character you're playing as? Or do you think that it helped you play your character better? Yeah, I mean, there's a certainly in the last few years, there's been no shortage of challenges um, being dealing with isolation or mm. feeling overwhelmed with people being upset and angry and everybody's had so many things to be frustrated about or to feel confusion about. And I think we experience that on social media when sometimes we have all these emotions and all these feelings and we're like, I just need people to hear how I'm feeling. I need people to understand. And then when we are all seeing everybody's feelings and we naturally, what's been great is getting to come to these events and meet so many people that are so loving and compassionate and empathetic and you see how social media can heavily affect them because you look at all these people that are in pain or dealing with frustration or mm -hmm. dealing with injustice and everybody just wants to help. Everybody just wants to make the world a better place. And uh, feeling that and knowing that, man, I can't do anything to fix this right now feels very defeating. Mm -hmm. So definitely that goes into the studio with me if I'm getting to play a character that is uh, trying, like Sarda, trying to um, get stronger and, and be able to, to be hopefully one day be Hokage or not let her team down or reach her goals. Well, and then your her expectations are Sasuke. Absolutely. And your, your expectations are making sure your fans are okay. Absolutely. So you, okay, so you bring that struggle. You forward. bring that into the booth and, and also just knowing that me as a as a person wanting to make the world a better place and, and saying like, oh, man, what can I do to help everybody or to help my family feel comfortable, help myself feel comfortable, mm -hmm. help my friends feel comfortable, and how can I get better and get stronger? And then when I'll see these scenes, it becomes very cathartic for me to get to go through that. I mean, when we worked on... Um, the Sword Art Online Progressive Part 1 movie we recorded from home and obviously in Sword Art the characters are dealing with a lot of isolation of being trapped in the game and in such high stakes and we recorded that in quarantine in isolation so as she's crying and saying I just want to see my family and how am I going to get out of here and I don't know if I'm strong enough to do this all of those emotions were very much at the surface and getting to have the words there and seeing the animation not knowing that I felt that on such a level, being given the gift of getting to say that, it gets it out of your system so it's not weighing me down. And, um, you know, the same thing happened uh, when Rice was here, but if yeah. we see something with the fans that come in, your lines actually impacted them. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they impact, they impact us as well. I mean, there's been so many times. I know there was one when we worked on Sailor Moon. Um, I... I, like I said, I was bullied when I was young and I had a hard time trusting uh, a lot of girls because I had known what it was like to be picked on by girls in school. And so now I have a lot of great female friendships and I've had a lot of great friends that have been fantastic. But when we were working on Sailor Moon and I had one of my last few lines, it was like, I'm just gonna miss these girls. We're like a family and I love getting, and I was crying saying the line because I was envisioning Amanda and Christina and Stephanie and Kate and uh, and getting to go through all those characters and like reliving all the moments and going to conventions together. So yeah, all of our experiences yeah, definitely yeah. goes into the characters. And when we get to say those words, they help us process our emotions, they help heal us. And I'm so glad it does it for the fans as well because it's such a gift for us. Do you think um, more impactful um, Venus or Austin? I think uh, Venus fits you more to your personality. <laughs> well, I thank feel like, you. I feel like, yeah. Um, <laughs> 
But uh, what do you think is more to the fans? It was more of an impact. Do you think it was Asuna? Do you think it was? Man, it's been so interesting because I've gotten to uh, gotten to travel the world and go to conventions in Japan and Ireland and Australia and in the UK and across uh, the United States and Canada. And it's so funny because sometimes I'll go to a convention and everybody loves Lucy and nobody wants to talk about Asuna. Sometimes I'll go to a convention and everybody loves Asuna. Sometimes it's all Sailor Venus and sometimes it's all Makoto and Persona 5. So it's so interesting. I'll go home because, you know, we have uh, some posters and prints and things and I'll go home and say, okay, what do we need to take uh, inventory of? What needs to get reordered? And I'll go, man, this is a huge weekend for Lucy. Everybody <laughs> loved Lucy. So it's, it's so interesting getting to hear what quotes people, uh, what resonates with them, what characters they connect with, and then hearing their stories about why they love fairy tale and why it means so much to them to be a part of the guild or why they love Asuna and Kirito. And then they'll come to me and say, and this is my boyfriend and we met watching the show. And it's, it's really sweet to hear everybody's experiences and to see uh, how their life has been impacted by the show. And it affects me to get to hear their stories and to get to hear how these characters connected with them mm. I also like to hear when they say what their favorite lines are I'm like oh you're a tough guy but you're definitely an undercover romantic because when I gave you five quotes you did not pick the fierce ones you picked the very sweet sentimental ones so it's fun getting to kind of getting to know everybody yeah. else and what they what they love most about the character which is pretty cool and deep down yeah what was um do you have anything you want to add? so in, in all of the characters that you ever played like what is the most character like out of the characters that you played what is the most characters like you resonate with? Um, I feel like I will always look back on the characters and say, if I auditioned for that character at a different time in my life, would I have gotten cast? Because we're all dealing with different things. We could look back 10 years ago mm. and like say I'm a completely different person than I was before. So if I auditioned for Lucy now, would I still get cast as Lucy? Because a lot of the things that she was dealing with in the show uh, I was dealing with in some way, shape, form, or fashion, and I wonder if that essence or that experience or that, uh, I guess, that connection between us is the reason I got the job. And the same with Asuna. I mean, throughout the progression of the show, I got engaged while Asuna and Kirito were getting together, and I got married while they were doing that. So kind of my relationship has kind of mirrored that as yeah. well. And I've had experiences like that with every character. So when I look back and say, this one is the most like me for that moment. And this one is the most like me for that moment. It's hard to pick uh, an absolute favorite. I know most, most recently I worked on a show called Kotaro Lives Alone, and I got to co-direct the show, and I also got to act in the show. And I was so nervous to do it because I don't play a lot of uh, boy characters. Mm. But it was so cool to kind of get to experience it as like the protector of Kotaro from the director perspective, and also just the purity and the love and the the honesty and the compassion that is Kotaro and kind of getting to experience both sides of the spectrum of the show. So that was a very special experience, getting to see the behind the scenes and uh, getting to be in front of the mic in that way. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that takes a lot of a lot of like energy to do every single line, does, does it? Oh, yeah. Well, and with Kotaro uh, in particular, we had a very, very tight deadline. And so if I was not acting as Kotro, we would start really early at like sometimes 8 o'clock in the morning and we would record till 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Um, and we had a team of engineers and, and Stephanie Shea and Mike Center Nicholas who were also acting in the show and also co-directing. It was really a team effort to get everything done um, on time and everybody did such an incredible job. But yeah, it, it is a lot of work when you're just like living with these characters and you know every line and you know every character and it's pretty fun. Living with we asked Bryce, what anime would you live in? He picked Do Ra Ra Ra. And so, of course he did. <laughs> yeah, and so saying that you, you know, you brought up Asuna, like yeah. your engagement and then your marriage. Totally. Yeah. Um, Thank gosh we were not trapped in a game at that yeah. time. <laughs> oh, that would so, have been stressful. Restricted to only the animes you've voiced. If you had to, like had to, had to, which had one? had to, had yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Trying to think what would be the, the cutest, least drama-free least stress show possible. Um, man, what is the cutest, most bubbly, happy place? See, Patty in Soul Eater is very happy, very bubbly, nothing gets her down. 
but, but Soul Eater, not yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gage, always down for everything, but things explode at a rapid pace in that game, and I don't know if I have the stamina or the, uh, the <laughs> like, the, the calmness to handle that. Um... Man, I would say I would say Coach Rowe, but there's a lot of feelings and a lot of emotions in that and a lot of sadness, and I know that I could get through it, but that would be pretty rough. Uh, I'm gonna say Sailor Moon, because if even if things get bad, I got I got a group of gals who are gonna come from all over the yeah, world and yeah. the galaxy to come and have have our backs. There, so even if you're having a rough sailor. day, that there's somebody who's gonna yeah, show yeah, up yeah, and fix yeah, it, which yeah. is kind of nice. That's kind of yeah. comforting. You got the flawed armor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You exactly. have flawed armor. That's good one. Yeah. I, uh, was it Bryce Gamble? He didn't pick one with flawed armor. Did he really? Yeah, I could do raw, raw, raw. You know, it could be of anybody. Of course, of course. Could, uh, all screwed. the time. Yeah, That's yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. You were like, I'm safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my character is alive at the yes. end of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, wow. That, that has to be, like, one of the best animes I've ever watched. Do raw, raw. Oh, <laughs> it's so best much plots. fun. The best plot. The best what, plot. <laughs> what now, new anime, like Jujutsu Kaisen, Reincarnated as a Slime, what, what do you oh, want to hop on? Man, what do you want to get a roll so in? there's so many good shows, and I feel, I feel so, so... Without telling us what I you feel have so greedy <laughs> or guilty <laughs> even wanting to work on more shows because I feel like I've won the lottery, and I, I've, I know so many of these directors so well, and I trust them implicitly that I'm like, whatever show they think... I'd be a fit for, even if it's just, just a couple lines here and there. They know I'm just happy to work on stuff. I got very, very lucky during uh, quarantine that a bunch of directors would say, hey, would you come in and just do this quick episode for me really quick and jump into this world? And that was really, really nice mm. to get to guest and stuff. But if they say, like, hey, we'd like you to do uh, take on this role. Would you love to do it? I trust them. And if they think I'm a good fit, awesome. And if they think another actor is a good fit, that other actor is my friend, and I'm happy to see him work, and I'm happy to see the story come together. I never would have imagined I would have gotten to work on Fruits Basket, and Caitlin Glass called and said, I've got a role for you if you want to work on Fruits Basket. And I said, uh, I'm in. She was like, yeah. do you want to hear the role? I go, Caitlin, I trust you. Whatever you want to do. And, and the scheduled. same with uh, oh, Zombieland. Zombieland Saga. It was another one that Jade oh, said. Okay. This is a fun character. And I had a blast with both of those. Yeah, when when um, our boss told us like the con confirmed that you were coming. Yeah. I, like, I looked I looked you up and I was like fruit basket. I looked at the character and I was like, oh, <laughs> and, like it like all clear. I was like, oh, because she's so yeah, funny. Fruit fruits basket is like one of my top ten. Oh my yeah, gosh, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. such a great show. Do you, okay, okay. Um, do you think, or maybe do you feel like you would have wanted one of the more intense character roles in that show because I mean like it's I don't know because in order for me to get one of the intense yeah. character roles it would mean taking somebody else out of them and I love what they did in the show and that's such a hard thing to do you know what I mean that's it's true. like you I would have to be like well who do I lose and there was not yeah. a bad performance in that show so while it would be fun to get to act out those roles I can't sub myself out for somebody that's else like, you know um, who, who voiced Kyo? Kyo. Because he also voiced Psyche K, but I think what, it was because he was in Fruit Basket. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That they changed the voice actor for Psyche K. Psyche K they, now is... They changed a lot of voice actors around. Yeah. Sure. So is that what you're talking about? You're talking... Because, like, honestly, it could ruin a show. Like, it, totally. Like, he was Psyche K for me and a lot of other people. Just yeah. And, like, now it's just, like, damn. Like, well, it's, you know, and yeah. it's it's so hard because sometimes it just comes down to when we have a sim when there's a simul dub schedule they have X amount of lines that they have to get done. There's only yeah. X amount of hours in a day, and an actor can only work so many hours, so that can be super, super tricky. So it's just finding that balance and figuring out how can we create the best product. And uh, uh, then there's times where, where people get pregnant or they'll have to go take care of family. Oh, they got to wow. sub yeah. out, and Real some life. people get right, super yeah. sick and lose their voice for nine weeks, and on a simul dub, that's like the kiss of death, and somebody has to step in at the last moment. And nobody likes to do that because we love these characters and we love these actors and they imprint upon us as those voices. Uh, but like you said, sometimes life happens and somebody's got to step in. And I know it's such a hard job. Nobody wants that job of being like, oh man, I'm stepping in with this beloved character and I feel so much pressure and I just want to do right by the fans or right by my friend who's the actor. So it's a, it's a tough situation. Well, we, we want to say thank you for taking the time. Oh my gosh, my you, pleasure! You know, the like I saw you wearing your mask all day, so you know, <laughs> that, that that could also affect your career too. So thank yeah, you very much, absolutely. everyone. Absolutely. Big, you know, for yeah. Yeah, yeah, our, yeah. every voice actor that we bring here. Um, that's true. But thank you so much for sitting down for us. Thank like, you. Thank you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. We want to get. Um, 
probably like the first five, six voice actors we've had and have you guys all in at once. But it'll probably yeah. be super hectic and two hours long. Oh my gosh, it'll be it. great. Yeah, that would yeah, be amazing. Yeah, yeah. As a so, reunion show. Reunion yeah. show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reunion, yeah. first season, season finale. It'll be great. Yeah. Maybe we can do like a skit and have them all voice our own handmade characters. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, Popsicle we'll, stick versions of our characters. Yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> <That'd> be great. <laughs> Little chibi versions. But um, thank you guys for watching. This is Shammy Lee. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Yeah, hit, put the notification bell on, and uh, well, wait for the next announcement of the next, uh, next voice actor. So. Yep. Yeah. Stay tuned because Sherman League will be live tomorrow at Super Anime Store in Naples. Well, this is going to come out like a week later, so it's. You know what I mean. Yeah. But, uh, thank you guys so much. Peace thank out, guys. guys. Peace out, guys. Hey guys, thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video. Just make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below, put the notification bell on, and share this video with everyone you know. Thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah.